Yes. Good evening. Uh, I'm going to be talking about preserving film and TV with the quantum Zeno effect. Uh, because I'm sure most of you have experienced it when you watched something uh, when you were younger and it was brilliant. Uh, but when you became a, a bit older, you realized it wasn't actually as good as you thought it was at first. I'd like to propose that rather than you changing, the problem is that the film has changed. And its quantum state has evolved into a less good film. <laughs> I would also like to present the secondary hypothesis that this is because films resemble neutrinos. <laughs> and um, I know what you're thinking, films are popular entertainment, neutrinos are fundamental subatomic particles. Uh, but um, right now, uh, lots of films and lots of neutrinos are passing you by. Um, <laughs> Uh, um, neutrinos have won uh, lots of prizes. Um, the Nobel Prize in Physics has been awarded most recently last year for research done on neutrinos. And as we all know, uh, films win lots of awards. Uh, um, we also know um, neutrinos um, come in uh, three flavors. Uh, electron, muon, and tau. Uh, but that's not exactly what we can think of them being made of. We think of them traveling as mass states, so one flavor is made of a mix of different mass states. And in the same way, films, uh, we kind of measure how good they are when we're watching them. Um, they are a little bit more complex than neutrinos, I must admit, so we have to have a bigger scale. Uh, and this is further complicated by the fact that some films are so bad they're good. Uh, uh, but uh, even though we measure how good films are, um, they're in fact made up of lots of different things. For example, The Lion King is made of Hamlet plus lions. <laughs> so they're very similar. And we, we've looked um, at neutrinos, and the Nobel Prize last year was awarded for neutrino oscillations. So in this case, an electron neutrino, as it travels, has a small probability of becoming a different type of neutrino. So I would like to suggest that uh, this is like a good film. Uh, Well-made written and acted film is likely over time to remain good. When you measure it again, you have a high probability of seeing it as a good film. Sadly, this also means a bad film is likely to stay a bad film. <laughs> Whereas there are other films which um, are like these different types of neutrino oscillations. A muon neutrino will oscillate and turn into most likely a tau neutrino over time. And in this case, a film that you liked as a kid may rapidly become just okay, or even bad over time. Um, you notice, actually, in the graphs, uh, good comes back up again a bit later. Uh, I like to call this the ironic appreciation peak. <laughs> So the question is, how do we keep these films, these good films, staying good? And um, it's, it's very difficult because films, as I said before, have such a complex structure and just a small difference in films can change their behavior. For instance, uh, Star Wars A New Hope, uh, we have here uh, lightsaber fights, uh, also present in The Phantom Menace. Um, we also have um, a whiny uh, youngster in New Hope and The Phantom Menace. So these are looking very similar. Um, be aware, there are going to be some spoilers in the next 30 seconds. So if you haven't seen these films, close your eyes and block your ears. They both have um, climatic fights in spacecraft. And also a well-respected actor who then goes on to die towards the end. <laughs> and yet they have very different approval ratings when they're measured. So it's very difficult. We can't actually just build the ones that are always going to stay good. So instead, we have to keep the ones that are good, good. And we can do this using the quantum Zeno effect. In quantum physics, measuring something can effectively change what it is and force it into the state that you've measured. The uh, electron neutrino, um, and neutrino traveling can effectively be a mixture oscillating between these different types of neutrino. But as soon as you measure it, it becomes just one electron neutrino. And more than that, if you keep measuring it, the state can never change. <laughs> uh, now, this is the point where I'd like to put a, put, point out a slight flaw with the weeping angels in Doctor Who, <laughs> which, is, which is that as long as you don't blink, you're fine. But our eyes, we're not actually actively conscious of the world all the time. Our eyes are just flickering slightly. So there's lots of time 
when we're not watching the angels, and they would, in fact, just kill you. Um, in the same way, we're not constantly watching films. And in order to actually keep the films as good, we have to be constantly watching them so their quantum state doesn't have time to change. <laughs> so um, in measurements done on an ultra-cold gas, this means that you have to have at least 400 measurements per second. And I've worked out what that would mean in terms of DVD videos and Blu-ray discs. Actually, higher quality videos makes it harder to keep films good. <laughs> yeah. You see all the imperfections that you didn't before. Um, but, but more than that, uh, when we're measuring these films, uh, some people are fans of a franchise, and so they're not always the best at measuring the quality of the franchise. And so with the probable problem of needing to measure so often and needing um, someone who is independent to measure them, I would like to suggest that we instead set up AI measuring how good our films are, watching our films constantly so they can never change. This has got several uh, benefits to humanity. It means we're more likely to keep good films uh, and we won't have bad films uh, so much. Also, um, if they are, these AIs are watching our films, that means they'll come to appreciate them. That's the whole point. They need to be able to appreciate films in the same way that we do. And so that means that we'll have friendly AIs who enjoy watching our films, <laughs> which means they're less likely to go on a murdering rampage. <laughs> Admittedly, there are also problems with this. Uh, we may accidentally measure a good film as a bad film uh, and never be able to get it out of that state again without having to spend a long time while its state changes with no one watching it at all. <laughs> the other problem, of course, is that um, the machines might just not just appreciate films, but learn how to make their own films, <laughs> thus rendering humanity completely redundant. <laughs> but I think these are small risks to, for such good possibilities for the cultural life of humanity. Thank you very much.